Good morning, welcome, welcome. We want to welcome you to Heartland Community Church. Real quick, a couple quick announcements. Uh, starting this week, we will be, a uh, couple individuals will be putting in a new entry door in the sanctuary. So that construction will be going on this week. And then I want you to save the date for March 25th and 28th. So let me check my calendar real quick. Um, those are good. The 23rd, I'm sorry, March 23rd and 25th at 6 to 8. We encourage you to come youth on up. We're going to have spring clean. Just kind of tidy up the church a little bit before Easter. Um, and there will be a list of things that from youngest to the oldest can help clean and just kind of tidy up after the construction that has occurred. Thank you. How's everybody doing this morning here at Heartland Church? Good. Good. You sound awake. Praise God. Um, anybody that's visiting today, we just say it's an honor that you're worshiping with us today and we are welcoming you. Um, I think we need to stand up and we're going to have a, we're just going to shout out to the Lord. We are going to sing about how awesome he is. Praise the Lord. Ready, Jace? Go ahead and kick us off. Our God is an awesome God, He reigns from heaven above with wisdom, power, and love. Our God is an awesome God, everybody. Our God is an awesome God, He reigns from heaven above with wisdom, power, and love. Our God is an awesome God. Amen. Amen. We're just going to bring our greatest praise. Go ahead, Jay. Sorry. Hallelujah. Our God is an awesome God. He reigns from heaven above with wisdom, power, and love. Our God is an awesome God. Our God is an awesome God. He reigns from heaven above with wisdom, power, and love. No. 
on the winds, our God is an awesome God. There's thunder in His footsteps and lightning in His fist, our God is an awesome God. And the Lord was a joking when He kicked Him out of Eden. It wasn't for the reason that He shed His blood. Turn us very close and so you better be believing that our God is an awesome God. Our God is an awesome God. He reigns from heaven above with wisdom, power, and love. Our God is an awesome God. Our God is an awesome God. He reigns from heaven above with wisdom, power, and Stardust in the void of the night, our God is an awesome God. He spoke it into the darkness and created the light, our God is an awesome God. And judgment and wrath He poured out in time, and mercy and grace He gave us at the cross. I hope that you are not too quickly forgotten that our God is an awesome God. next song see a victory God has just laid on my heart the like Pastor Troy always says the preciousness of children and I feel like this generation of children are being attacked from the enemy and I feel like it's our responsibility as a church and as parents as grandchildren that we lift them up in prayer and we declare and speak life and victory over them because we're all connected our story is connected to theirs in some way. If you are blessed with children and grandchildren, nieces, nephews, with all the millions and millions of people, God placed you in their lives. So their story is connected to yours. And I'm just crying out for God to just come and save those children that are being afflicted. And out of Psalms 12, verse 5. The Lord replies, I have seen violence done to the helpless, and I have heard the groans of the poor. Now I will rise up to rescue them, as they have longed for me to do. The Lord's promises are pure, like silver refined in a furnace, purified seven times over. Therefore, Lord, we know you will protect the oppressed, preserving them forever from this lying generation. So God, we just are going to mix with our faith, with this, ver uh, this song, See a Victory. And we're just going to declare victory, God, because you, God, have promised it. Amen. The weapon may be formed, but it won't prosper. And when the darkness falls, it won't breathe in. Victory for the battle be won. 
power in the mighty name. Oh, there's power in the mighty name of Jesus. And every war he wages, he will win. I'm not backing down from any giants. I know how the story ends. Yes, I know how the story ends. Oh 
everyone. How are we doing this morning? Great. May the grace of our Father and Lord and Savior Jesus Christ be with all of you. God wants to show you <clears throat> his heart today. He wants to show you a piece of his heart and when you sit quietly, Psalms 46 10 says, be still and know that I am God. God wants you to know who he is today. I saw God making me weep before I came up here. He, he was showing me his heart for the people and it became heavy. See, sometimes when, all the time when God shows you his heart, it's too much for man to carry. It's too much burden for him to carry. And I started to weep over there. Because he sees today right where you're at in your life. He sees if you're hurting. He sees your pain and your brokenness. And he wants you just to accept him and allow him to fix it. 
the only weight in life that you should be carrying is the one that's in the gym. Did you hear what God said? The only weight you should be carrying in life is in the gym. He doesn't want you to carry these burdens. Your burden should be light. The yoke should be easy. The, the oxen pull and the plow across the field should be easy. He doesn't want you to have a wagon behind you or a cement mixer. You're not pulling a cement, a cement truck behind you. He's broke every chain in your life if you allow him to break it today. Are you allowing him to break it today? Because he's showing me that his heart is weeping for you. He's showing that, that he loves you today and that he sent his son Jesus to make everything right and good and that there's victory coming. There's victory over the darkness. There's victory and light that is brighter than any darkness that you're going through. I sense that some of you are dealing with some tough things in life today. I sense that there's people that are watching from their living rooms and their homes that, that the burden that you're carrying, God says he wants to set you free. And when he sets you free, you're free indeed. God is doing a gathering up. The seeds have been sown and the harvest is about to come about. Are we ready, church? God never intended for those church doors to ever be closed through any pandemic. It is not God's intention for man to quit preaching. It is not God's intention to stop loving people and stop serving people. He's just showing me that, that it's not his intention around the world for us to quit worshiping him in his throne room to keep singing songs of praise. He said, Troy, it's a time that you run to me and you dig into me and you go before the masses and you tell them about me. I've got your burden. I, I've got your pain. I, I carried the cross for you. I covered all of that stuff in your life. But church, we can't let up because people are dying without Christ. The worst thing that can ever, 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 ever happen to somebody is that they die without Christ. You, God's in, in, in wanting to build this relationship with you that, that you've never known. Jack, I'm here to tell you today that you've known Christ for a long time, amen? You and Ladine both. But he's telling me that he's got more to share with you guys as life goes on that, that, that you've just touched the surface of a relationship with who he is. And it's not because you didn't do anything wrong. God just wants to share so much more of himself. He wants to show something new. That's what he's telling me, James and Sarah, that he's got so much more about himself to share with you. Brian, I was sitting right here praying and I had compassion for you before you got here. And I was getting ready to look into that camera and he told me to tell you that victory is coming for you. I don't know what you're walking through. I don't know what you're going through, but he said victory is coming for you. And that was before you walked through those doors. God has a word for you. He has a game changer for you. He has things he wants sp speaking over your life. If we're not still, we miss the moment. Don't you just love being in his presence? God wants to take those addictions that's in your life, whether it's alcohol or drugs or tobacco. He's wanting to say, I'll replace all that with my spirit if you're willing to let go. With God, it's not mission impossible. Did you just hear what he said, church? With him, it's never mission impossible. He takes the impossible and he laughs at it and says, that's not even a challenge. 
man is the one that creates the challenge and talks about the mission impossible. Maybe God's called you at this time to, to walk alone and to walk by yourself for just a little while. But in that due season, he said, you're really not alone because I sent my son Jesus. And when Jesus came to my kingdom to live with me, I sent the advocate, the helper, the Holy Spirit to live inside of you. And he will bond with you. And where you're lonely, he will be there for you. God's working in everybody's life. God doesn't leave one person out, no matter where you're sitting in this church today or whether you're sitting at home. God is wanting to pour into you. And, and I do just want to give a shout out to, to our members and our friends that are at home. I'm telling you, when it's time, come back. We need every family member on board for what's about ready to come. You guys, God's planning a vision here and he's wanting to bring the team together and he's wanting to bring the family together. And we got to group up and get ready for, for what he's asking us to do. And it may require going out in the street. It may require being in the places that we're not comfortable. You guys, God's family should be an atmosphere of praise. God's family should be an atmosphere of strength that, that Philippians 4.13 says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me, Dave. Stacy. You can do all things through Christ, Dylan. Whatever God's calling you and Maya to today, it's something greater. I'm here to tell you today that, that God is bringing change to you guys. He's going to strengthen your marriage. He's going to strengthen your work. He's going to strengthen you in the word. And you guys are going to be game changers. But be still and know that he's God and believe because it's not mission impossible. If it was Mission Impossible, Troy wouldn't be standing up here because I thought I was Mission Impossible. God is into doing greater things than what we could ever imagine or speak or do. God wants to meet us right where we're at, right in our living rooms, right in our homes, right in our jobs, right in our streets. And he's wanting to show you his image. A mirror image. I don't know if you have that slide of mirror image, but there it is. Today's, the title of today's sermon is Mirror Image. And it's going to be about what you see when you look in the mirror. What you see when you look in the mirror. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly and Gracious Father, I... I just long to do your will. I long to speak your heart and feel the power of the Holy Spirit upon us, God. I pray, God, as we move forward, you would have a word that would touch our hearts and our lives and that we would come together in an attitude of worship, God, an attitude of belief, God, that you're going to do what you say you're going to do. You're going to be who you say you are, the great I am. So that moving forward, God, be in our hearts today, direct traffic, so to speak, God, and allow the Holy Spirit to work through us and through me, Father God. In your name I pray, amen. amen. Well, let the Lord bless and keep you. Let his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. Let him lift his countenance upon you and give you peace. His countenance upon you. His very face wants to come in, in contact with you. He wants to place himself right before you, Trent. Nose to nose. Remember when your football coach did that? It wasn't a fun moment, was it? God's not going to grab your face mask the same way your coach did. But he wants to rub noses with you. He wants to rub noses with you. 
He wants you to breathe his very breath. Because when you breathe the very breath of God, his healing power consumes your life. His, his presence consumes your life. And when you look in the mirror today, what do you see? And we often stand up to the mirror and we fix our dress and we lengthen our sleeves and we comb the hair that we don't have down the center and we wish we had more. And maybe we sit here and we do this when no one's around. Hey, I'm looking pretty good. And then I hear God chuckle. And then I need to realize that I need to get to the gym if I want to change my overall physical appearance. But it seems like that hurts too much nowadays. You guys, when we look in the mirror, what do you see about yourself? Do you ever say the word righteousness when you look in the mirror? Do you ever say the word holy when you look in the mirror, not holy cow? Do you ever say that I'm a saint in Christ Jesus? You are a saint in Christ Jesus. He made you in an image and a likeness of himself. Genesis chapter 1, and, and Dale and I have been hitting on this hard in Bible study and in church, but Genesis chapter 1, starting with verse 26. I'm just going to read it from up here. Genesis chapter 1 says, Then God said, Let us make a man in our image. According to our likeness, let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on earth. So God created man in his what? Oh. Own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. It wasn't man and man. It wasn't female and female. It was male and female. Some, somewhere along the lines in America, we've got it wrong. Marriage is between a man and a woman is what scripture says. But God made us in his own image. And when you look in the mirror, do you ever see a resemblance of Jesus Christ? Now, I know our physical appearance is there. I, I know our fleshly appearance is there. But, but God said he created us as an image of Christ. And, and when we look in the mirror, we should see the, the nine fruits of the Spirit. God is like a rainbow of colors. Are you colorful when you look in the mirror? Do you think of godliness? Do you see yourself as a lighted rainbow? He made us in his own image his own power his own grace his own love God wants you to start walking so that other people see him in you without you speaking a word let me say that again in a different way you might be the only Bible that person ever reads you've heard that before right you might be the only Bible that that person ever reads by the way you shake their hand, by the kind words that you speak, by the words you choose not to speak. People don't always say the first thing that comes to mind. That's often the one that gets you in trouble. Be still and know that I'm God and give God a chance to speak to you about that person. You guys, the last two to three weeks, I'm here to tell you today that I've seen breakthrough in people's lives. I've seen miracles in people's lives and the world seems to be going through tough times and, and everybody's focusing on the fleshly things of the world and the darkness that's over the world right now. But I'm here to tell you today that God's about ready to light it up. He's about ready to light it up and he is because I, I've seen... Renita, God bless you. I've seen her healed up here free of pain. I see her have not a cancerous report this week. Amen? 
I've seen some other lady that came forward and, and had immediate breakthrough after prayer, after church. The next day at work, she had immediate breakthrough because we laid hands on and prayed. It's not that we did anything, but God told us to, and now she had breakthrough. We prayed over a lady up here, and she just had a healthy baby, amen? Is that the baby over there? You bring that baby up here. I want to pray over her. Can we do that? Grandma gets to bring the baby forward. Well, why am I doing this? Because at the beginning of the year, God told me this year was about the preciousness of life. It's about the, being the voice for the child. So he told me and Carrie, don't you dare shrink back, Troy. Don't you dare, because I'm judging the church right now on whether these pastors shrink back or whether they preach the gospel of Jesus Christ and whether they stand up and be the voice for that child. Remind me of the child's name? Cole. Cole. Okay. Dear Heavenly Father, I just pray blessings over Cole today. I pray, God, that you so move in his life, Father, that you protect him, God, with righteousness. That as he grows up, he'll be a godly man in Christ. I see that, Father. I see that you have plans to prosper him and to move him forward. That, that great are you, Lord, that he will speak all the days of his life. And that your blood will cover him from the schemes of the enemy. And that until he can speak, his family will be his voice. And he will be trained in the things of God. God's going to give this child great power. So blessings to you, Cole, in the name of Jesus, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Isn't that great? Everybody give a clap. You guys, we should always be ready to give an account for the gospel of Jesus Christ. We should all, always be ready to pray over our children for protection. At any time, I never not want to pray over a child. If you have a child and you want prayer, you bring them forward before or after the service. It's okay. But I'm telling you, God told me, don't shut up, Troy. You stand up for the children. You stand up for the children because I'm sick and tired of the blood that's been poured out over America and over this world and man acts like it's his right and no big deal. And I've spoken out a lot on that, you guys, but he's ingrained it in me. He's pressed upon my heart and I've wept and I've wept dearly. And I also want to tell the mothers and the fathers that have, have made the wrong decision that God forgives you and that he loves you and that his grace is sufficient and that there's no condemnation in those who love Christ Jesus. He loves you. He's just asking you to rebound and start over, but he's asking us to stop the violence. He's asking the church to be what it hasn't been. What good is a church if it's just a place of gathering what good is it at church if we say don't preach those words because you might offend somebody sometimes we need to be offended sometimes we need to allow the Holy Spirit to ingrain things into us and work on us and if we're offended then I'm here to tell you today that the Holy Spirit is trying to tell you something And all your wrongs, Jesus Christ made them right on the cross. So you don't have to carry that burden with you. God's just asking you to start over and dig into the scripture and follow what it says, because he wants to bless this nation. Do you guys believe that he's about ready to bless America, even through the darkness? I do. He's about ready to bless us, but he, he's, he's, checking, he's checking churches right now. He's checking pastors right now. He's checking elder boards and trustee boards. He's checking them. We're going through a, a, a period here that seems dark and silent and quiet, but he's checking. 
And who's ever in their life is willing to stand up for Christ. I'm speaking blessings coming over your life. But if you shrink back. The blessings going to disappear that he has for you. Do you realize that we're speaking for generations to come? When we protect the children. So when we stand and we look in a mirror, what do you what do you stand for looking in the mirror? Imagine yourself there right now that you're looking in a mirror and you're a mirror image of Christ or are you? If you saw Jesus in the mirror and he's standing in there and he's talking back to you, what would he say about you? Well, Troy gave you the Ten Commandments and you've only followed eight of them. Are you telling me, Troy, that those other two aren't important and that it's your decision and, and not mine? I'm the one who went to the cross, Troy. God's asking you to, to look in the mirror and, and, and do a self-evaluation of yourself. And, and he doesn't want you to stay doom and gloom. Your heart may break a little bit as, as you're giving yourself a self-evaluation. But God mends and repairs the broken heart. God loves the brokenhearted. He doesn't like seeing it. He says, do not let your heart be troubled. God didn't create a spirit of, of fear, but of power and love and a sound mind. He wants your mind to be sound. Why am I preaching today on the image of Christ? Why are, why are we looking in a mirror and, and hoping to see Jesus and find Jesus? It's because the world is confusing our children today about who they are and who they should be and who they were created to be. Who they are, who they were created to be, not who the school district tells them that they could be. If God created you a male, you stay a male. If God created you a female, you stay a female because he has a plan to prosper you, not to harm you for a future and a hope. Amen. Amen. And we love all people. And some of you that are watching may have walked through some of those tough decisions. But I'm here to tell you today that the church will not judge you. We will love you and bring you into the fold. But we will always preach the truth with love and discipline and truth. You guys, we're, we're entering a time where, where the government wants to tell our schools that parents can't be allowed in the decision process of their children. They're wanting to force our children in and tell them a sex change is okay. It's not okay. God knew you when you were in your mother's womb. He knew you before he created you. And I'm here to tell you today, when, when kids do those things, they're lost because no one has taught them about the image of Christ and who they are in Christ. When we know who we are in Christ, we don't try to change ourselves in that way. We make changes according to the gospel of Jesus Christ and the nine fruits of the spirit. Love, joy, peace, kindness, faithfulness, gentleness, meekness, self-control. We're losing self-control in our schools today. We're losing self-control over our children. Parents have the right to speak to their children, to guide their children, to help make decisions for their children. Gosh darn it, guys, I know these issues are tough. And I know people get mad at me in the public when I speak out like this, but I don't have a choice because I fear God and not man. In the times that I was doing wrong and not right, God would show me. I fear his discipline. The Christian is should be holding to a higher accountability because we know better. I've talked to people about these issues and they said, you know what, as long as it doesn't bother me, they're not bothering me. That's not in my home. They're not bothering me. That's as long as it doesn't come near me. Is that the job of the church to talk like that? Or do we rise up and support scripture and speak about scripture out of love, kindness, self, peace, joy, faithfulness, meekness? Gentleness. It's not what you say, it's how you say it. And if, if you say it with scripture and, and you give an account for what you believe, what the gospel says in Peter, we should be ready to give an account at all times. 
for what we believe, but I'm here to tell you today that the church hasn't given an account for a long time or the world wouldn't be where it's at right now. You guys, th these, these issues are a family issue. They're a church issue. They're, they're, they're a demonic issue that the enemy's using over this nation, over this country, over this world. He's, he's trying to get his way with our children. Turn with me to Ezekiel chapter 1, verse 26 to 28. And I just want to read a couple of these. And it says, and above the firmament over their heads was the likeness of a throne. In appearance like a sapphire stone on the likeness of the throne was a likeness with the appearance of a man above it. Also from the appearance of his waist and upward I saw as it were the color of amber with the appearance of fire all around within it. And from the appearance of his waist and downward I saw as it were the appearance of fire with brightness all around. Like the appearance of a rainbow in a cloud on a rainy day, so was the appearance of the brightness all around it. This was the appearance of the likeness of the glory of God. Whew. Isn't that awesome? The likeness of the glory of God. God was explaining his likeness. He explains it as a rainbow. You know how beautiful we see a rainbow. We know that that was a covenant with Noah and with man that God would never send a flood again in that capacity. But God says, I'm going to tell you a little bit about around my throne, what it looks like. Does God not seem awesome right there? Does God not seem like he can take care of your mission impossible? That same God that created that rainbow appearance around his throne and the glory around his throne, he created your life. He created your life. And don't think for one minute that he left out any detail of beauty, beautifulness in you and any brightness in you. No longer listen to the voice of the enemy. Listen to the voice of the likeness of God and the Holy Spirit that tells you you are worth everything to God. You are worth everything to God. There's not one person here that God didn't take time out to, to pay attention to detail, to make him in his likeness. We do not need to change our identity. We need to change the way we act and live. We need to combat sin. We need to train a child in the way they should go. And when they're old, they won't depart from it. Amen. Somewhere we stop training the children. Somewhere we stop training them. Turn with, put up Revelations chapter 4, verse 3. And he who sat there was like Jasper, and I'm not sure I'm saying that right, Sardius, stone in appearance. And there was a rainbow around the throne in appearance like an emerald. God's telling you about the colors of heaven. He told you in the book of Ezekiel, and now he's in the book of Revelations, and, and he's explaining his beauty and his power and his passion for detail. And, and when Solomon built the temple, God gave him so much specific instructions about how it was being made and, and, and how the detail of, of the stonework and the appearance Did you know that you're God's rainbow today? The beauty in the rainbows that, that we're reading about is how he sees you in different colors. You're his sapphire. You're his emerald. You, you, you're every color to God that he could possibly think of and make. That's your identity. He created your identity for a greater purpose. Galatians chapter 5, starting with verse 22. Is this that pointer you got me, Ryan? There, see if this works. There. 
Thank you, Ryan. It says, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such there is no law. And those who are in Christ have crucified the flesh with its passion and desires. So, so when we look in the mirror, we've crucified our fleshly self. God says when you become an image of Christ, you get rid of the old and you put on the new. And what does your rainbow of life, what does it look like? Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Those nine things. Do you see that back when you look in the mirror? Do you see love when you look in the mirror? Do you see someone who's full of joy when you look in the mirror? Do you someone that's relatively peaceful and to other people? Do you bring peace in the room or are people glad when you leave the room? You ever been around those people? Like, Lord, thank God that conversation ended. Don't be that person. Kindness. Kindness. Who, who have you sat down with lunch today? Just sat down and had fun and talked about life and, and, and be a friend. I, I, I'm going to share this. I was in Larned working and, and walked into Wendy's. Jeffrey and I did. And Mark, you were sitting there and you invited us to sit at your table. And you said it'd be an honor if Jeffrey and I came and sat with you. And when I left there that day, I said, Mark, that was one of the most kind. I said, that's one of the most nicest, kindest people I know. And we just shared life. We laughed about work and we talked about our things and we were just taking a time out. But Mark invited us to his table and said, it'd be an honor if you guys had sat with me. No, the honor was mine because I was sitting with Mark. See, God makes those divine appointments with friends because we weren't meant to walk with life. Do you think if I was a pain in the keister, Mark would have invited me to sit down over there? Maybe he would have. Maybe he would have lined me out. But the point is, people should want to have lunch with you. People should want to be around you. People should see your kindness and, and, and your love and, and your self-control. Knowing your, your true identity in Christ. God's here to download things into you just like a computer. But every so often, if you're not protected from the viruses that get downloaded in your computer, it crashes. And the only way you can maintain those nine gifts is if you allow God to download himself into you daily. That you wake up with an attitude of praise, an attitude of prayer, an attitude of worship. Allow God to, to download good things. Don't listen to the virus that the enemy is trying to download into your mind. Allow God to be your GPS. Allow him to put you on the right path. He won't drive you off into places that you don't want to be. Let God fill you up like that warm cup of coffee in the morning. Who was all glad to have coffee this morning? I was glad to have coffee. I was also glad that I slept on a my pillow last night. I got good sleep and then I woke up to that fresh tasting coffee and I'm like, I'm ready to go. God, look, what do you want to tell me today? Let God be the place where you lay your head. Let God be the place where you want to get up in the morning. We all look forward to that morning cup of coffee, but, but do we look to Christ like that? That cup of coffee is one of the first things I grab, but, but God says, Troy, once in a while, I want you to grab the word first. I want you to grab the word. I want to read you out of the freedom in Christ and I'm getting ready to, me and Pastor Josh and Trent and Eric from Great Bend Appliance, we're, we're taking Freedom in Christ to the Dream Center. And so Monday night, March 22nd, we're going to start showing that and having a Bible study again. And if it's 
This time it's for men. If there's a couple of you men that want to join us, you can. But this is, when you look in the mirror, this is who you are. You are accepted. I am God's child. I am Christ's friend. I have been justified. I have been bought with a price. I have been adopted as God's child. I have been redeemed and forgiven of all my sins. I am free from condemnation. I am free from condemning charges. Did you hear this? Listen, church, this is for somebody. Somebody needs this. I am free from any condemning charge against me. I cannot be separated from the love of God. I am significant. I am the salt of the earth and the light of the world. I am a branch of the true vine. You are a branch of the true vine of Jesus Christ. I'm a temple of God. I'm a fellow worker. Do you see yourselves as a temple of God? God's wanting you to continue to look in the mirror and see his image and his presence. God doesn't judge you like man judges you. Last night I ran to Coldwater with my nephew and we went to pick out his 4-H pigs. And I drove up there and I was praying and my phone was going off and and I talked to my wife and, and I talked to Candy on the phone and I was talking to Renee on the phone and talking to, to my brother and several other people and then my mom calls and I was talking to her and I had all these conversations and, and my mind was going in a hundred different directions. But you know what? God said, Troy, be still and know that I'm God because I have an answer for each person that you're talking to. You're just there to listen. And then I'll tell you what to do. But as we went, when we picked out his, his 4-H pigs, as, as they would come into the ring, we were judging them. We, we were looking about how they walked and, 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 and just their overall appearance and whether we thought they were a purple ribbon winner or, or a red ribbon winner. Red's not good. But you know when you enter the ring, God doesn't look at you like that, how fast you are, how strong you are, how good looking that I am. Just kidding. He looks at your heart. That's the only thing that he looks at. And, and he looks at the relationship that you seek after. He said, Troy, I bought and paid for this relationship. And, and Troy, all you got to do is, is extend your heart to me and give me your heart. And that's the only thing when you die, Troy, that I'll judge you on is your heart. And Troy, if, you're, if your heart is right with me, then the ticket is free and you could come into my kingdom. But if your heart isn't right, Troy, it won't be good for you. You guys, it's a heart matter when it comes to our identity. What's in your heart? It's not what's in your wallet. It's what's in your heart. Nobody laughed at that. It's what's, it's what's in your heart. You know, when we were milking cows, we, uh, whether it was 80 or 100, I, I could identify each cow and tell you about each one individually. And a lot of them, a lot of them just had numbers, but a handful of them had names, but, but every one of them had one of these in their ear, except the ones with names. A lot of the ones in, with the name went to the state fair and were shown. You, didn't have an ear tag in there because it wasn't showy enough. It wasn't professional enough. But every time that barn door opened, and I've told you this before, without even looking, I could tell you who the first six to 12 cows that were going to be coming in that door with my eyes closed. Isn't that how our God is? When you open the barn door to your heart, 
You build this great relationship with you. And he, he already knows everything about you without even looking. He, he, he knows where, where Cal 91 was going to come sliding in the front. He, he knows that Beth was going to go over here in, in the middle. And over here, Jan was going to be on this side. And, and Cal number seven was going to be one of the last ones milk. But you could call her in and not even go get her. He, just like I knew those cows, my dad and my brother and I knew those cows by heart. God can identify you in such a bigger way. See, what God's really wanting to do is uh, he knows who you are. He knows who you are. But he wants you to know who you are. In Christ. Worship team, if you come forward. He's... he's He's telling you, don't listen to the enemy. Because the enemy will, will tell you all these things about, about your life that aren't true. The enemy will tell you that just because you sin, God has no use for you. That's not true. Or the enemy will tell you, Troy, you didn't do this. You didn't, you don't, you don't know as much as Pastor Arlen because he, he, he went to seminary and he studied all this, all this stuff. So you, you don't know as much as he does, Troy. So how can God use you, Troy? Pastor Roy spent all those years and he was a wise, loving man. But the enemy would say, Troy, you're, you're not on that level. You know what? I'll be on that level if God tells me I'm on that level. He equips those who he calls. So what God's telling you today is that when you're looking in the mirror, he's equipped you for the task at hand that he's set for you in your life. He's equipped you to go before people and win them to Christ. What, what are you seeing in the mirror today? What do you see when you look in there? Are you, do you see any part of Christ in your life? If you don't, start looking for it. Start making changes in your life that the appearance of Jesus Christ shows up in the mirror. God chooses to work through man. Some of you have been praying about things for a very long time. Elijah prayed seven times before it rained. It didn't happen for Elijah the first time. It happened the seventh time. So what I'm here to tell you today is keep praying. Pray that God makes those changes in your heart that you're dealing with, the pain that you're dealing with, the suffering that you're dealing with. Let God change you in the mirror. Amen.
touch your heart you shall be perfect as your heavenly father is perfect God knows that we all sin and fall short of the glory of God every day it says that but to the one who created you just as you are you are perfect in his sight God is in the perfection business he is trying to perfect you he already has you just have to be willing to accept change. That's the God we serve. He's perfect. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I just thank you for your love and, and how you created us in an image. You could have created us any way you wanted, but you chose what was best. There's not one person who needs to change how you made them. Well, what we need to change is our heart and what's in our heart. You made everything perfect in your sight. You said it was good. So, Father, bless your people to that end. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. 